Lauren from Girly Knits and I am so excited to be back today with another machine knitting tutorial to teach you how to make this button front cardigan. So this cardigan is my brand new design which is called the Girlfriend Cardigan and if you want to get the pattern you can go find it at girlyknits.com or on Ravelry and Etsy where I am Girly Knits where I have machine knitting patterns. The pattern comes in nine different sizes to fit anywhere from a 28 to 54 inch bust and you can make it a variety of lengths. You can make it a cropped length, you can make it a regular length like I have on the mannequin, you can make it a long cardigan or you can even make it a dress. So it's super versatile and you can make it however you want to suit your preferences. The yarn that I'm going to be demonstrating with today is Hobby's Portobello, which is a really gorgeous yarn that works really well on the machine. It is a cotton, acrylic, and wool blend. And while it's called a worsted weight yarn, I thought it was more like a DK. The gauge that I got with this yarn was 21 stitches and 31 rows was four inches in stockinette stitch, which works out to 5.25 stitches per inch and 7.75 rows per inch, and I was using T4. So whatever yarn that you can use to get that gauge will work. And like I said, some worsted yarns, you might be able to get that gauge, but I find it a little bit easier with a DK yarn, or this yarn will definitely work. So the techniques that we'll be covering in this tutorial is first how to cast on for mocked ribbing, and then I'm going to show you how to add on this button band. And I really love this button band. This is something that I just kind of came up with through experimentation, because it is knitted as you go, and there's going to be a latched up column that's going to make it really easy to fold and seam. And while we're knitting, we're going to be knitting these extra large buttonholes, and then when we fold and seam them, they're going to be in the perfect spot to accommodate about a one inch button, which is perfect for a design like this. So the way I made the buttonholes was by using short rows, which is a really fun way to do it. So I'll be showing you every step of how to do that. And then once we get past the buttonholes, I will be showing you how to do the shaping along the neckline, as well as the short row shaping at the shoulders. I'll then be showing you how to do the short row shaping at the top of the back, how to seam these two sides together seamlessly for this collar and to join the front and back in a very seamless way as well. And then lastly, how I seam up the button band to give it this really beautiful professional finish so your cardigan looks beautiful. If you want to add pockets to your cardigan, I do have another tutorial, which I will link below, where I walk you step by step through how to add a pocket. And you can use this tutorial how to add a pocket onto anything. It's added after the garment is done, so you could really do this with any project you have. And in case you're wondering, the cardigan that I'm wearing is the cropped version, and I actually used a sport weight yarn held together with a thread weight yarn to get this variegated look, which I thought was really cute. But the great thing about this yarn that I'm using in the tutorial is it already has that variegated look, so you don't have to bring two yarns together, but that is an option if you don't have a DK weight yarn to work with or you want to use up some yarn that you have. So just to be clear, we're not going to make the entire cardigan in this video, but I'll be showing you all of the special techniques that I use and everything else is pretty straightforward. And if you have the pattern, you're going to have photos of every single technique used with very detailed instructions for every single size on how to construct this cardigan. So make sure to go get the pattern if you want to make this cardigan. And then if you just want to try this technique of this button band, you're of course welcome to follow along with this tutorial and you'll have all the steps you need to try it out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and find it useful. And if you like this tutorial or any of my other tutorials and you would like to support Support me. I just started a new page called buymeacoffee.com slash girly knits where you can buy me a coffee or make a donation and I would really appreciate it. It really helps in supporting me to continue making these tutorials for you. And of course, it really helps when you buy my patterns too. I really appreciate it and helps me to continue designing. All right, let's get started. So to start off, we are going to use our waist yarn and cast on for mock ribbing. And depending on which size you are making, is how many stitches you are going to cast on. I'm making the size three in the pattern, so I'm going to be casting on 45. And we're going to be casting on all of these stitches um, on the right side, so from zero to whatever number that is. So I'm doing 45, so I'm just gonna take this tool, which is for our mock ribbing, which is gonna select every fourth needle, and then I'm going to select along until I hit 45, which I see is right here. So I'm just gonna take that one out of work. And then we are going to thread up our waist yarn. And the tension we are using, um, I'm using T4 to get the gauge, which is 5.25 stitches per inch and 7.75 rows per inch. So whatever you need to do to get that gauge, use that. And so I'm just gonna thread my waist yarn and run it across the needle. And then for this next step, I'm going to be hanging my cast on comb. And I think just one is enough for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hang that, make sure it's even. And then this is something special I do for this pattern and something I've been doing um, with some designs I'm making is I'm adding an extra stitch on each edge as well as 
every other stitch in between, which is what you would normally do for mock ribbing, but I'm adding these additional edge stitches, kind of like selvage stitches, which is gonna help us when we add our band on, which will hopefully make more sense later. But even if it doesn't, <laughs> I've been enjoying doing this, having this one extra edge stitch for my mock ribbing. So after we do that, we're just going to be knitting with our waist yarn until we have nine or 10 rows. And then I'm just going to knit my very last row with Ravel cord, which will make it easier to remove the waist yarn later. So we're just gonna knit with that for this one row. We're gonna just stick it in, run it along, and then take it out. And now we are ready to knit with our main yarn. Okay, so now we're ready to knit with our main yarn. We're gonna reset our counter to zero because we wanna count our rows now. And for, and we are starting with the front right, which is the side that has the button holes on it because I will be showing you that. And for this side, we wanna leave a tail that we can later use to seam up the side of our cardigan. And that depends on which length you're making. For the cropped version, which I'm making, it is 31 inches. So I'm just gonna measure that out. And then we are just going to knit our first row. From here on, we're just going to knit to row 17 and then we are going to uh, cast on for our button band. So now that we're at row 17, we are going to cast on for our button band. And to do that, we are going to do an E-wrap cast on and we're going to be adding 16 stitches. So we already have one over here. So the total will be two is 17 after that's all done. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, I did one too many, there's 16. <laughs> so yeah, it should be 17 because we have this one, but 16 that we're e-wrapping on. Do an e-wrap cast on, which you're probably familiar with, but this time we're doing it a bit reverse because we're going this way. So you just wanna come from under the needle and over, under the needle and over. And we're just going to do that across all of these needles. And then this last one, we're just gonna leave empty. We're just gonna place the yarn in the carriage and then we will be just be knitting this row, which will be a little rough, but hopefully you'll get there. Okay, and then a trick for using E-wrap cast on is for about the first six rows, you're going to want to pull these needles out to deep position to make sure that they knit. So we're just gonna do that every row. for maybe about like six rows, just until you have enough fabric there that you can put a claw weight on. But if you don't do that, your yarn's probably gonna get all jumbled up. So just uh, make sure you do that. I think it looks good now. So now we can just move our weight over and now we have those added stitches. So at this point, we just want to knit to row 24, which is actually just one more row. And now we are ready to start our button band. So we're at row 24, which is the row that we are starting our buttonholes on. And the first step we're going to do is create eyelets where the buttonholes are going to start. So we are going to be transferring 13L to 12L. So 13L right here to 12L. And then another way you can do this is it's basically the fifth stitch from the left, so one, two, three, four, five, over to the right, one. And then we're also going to be transferring 5L to 4L, so I see 5L to 4L, and then again, another way you can count this is it is the 13th stitch, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 is going over to the stitch to the right of it. And this is so when we fold our button band together that those are going to line up to create one buttonhole. So for this very first row, we've transferred those stitches to create those eyelets. And then we're going to take this the needles that are empty out of work for this row. And then we are going to knit. 
Okay, so now in order to create these extra large buttonholes, um, normally you could just keep those in working position, knit, and I'll create an eyelet for like a small button. But because we're using a bigger button, we want a bigger buttonhole, and for that we're going to use short rows. So to do our short rows, first we're going to move our carriage settings so that our Russell lovers are on one so that stitches in D position won't knit. So we are going to put all of the stitches in D position, except for these left four right here, and then we are going to knit two rows. Now for this next row, we're basically going to be moving on to this next section to do short rows, and to do that we're going to put this needle that was in non-working position in working position, and then we're going to take this next section of needles, which should be easy to see, because we have this to mark where our eyelid is, and we're gonna put those in working position so they will knit, and then we are going to knit one row. All right, and then for this next row, we are going to be taking these five needles right here, so it's those four first ones plus the eyelet, and then we're going to put those in D position so they won't knit, and only these guys are going to knit because we're trying to knit just this section and then we are going to knit back. Okay, and then for this next row, we are going to take the needle that was in non-working position and put it in working position, and we are also going to take all of these needles that were on hold before and put them back in working position, and then we are going to knit a row. Okay, and then lastly, this is the last step, we are going to move this section in D position, including the eyelet that was formed, and then we're going to knit new rows, lastly to knit this last section here, um, excluding that buttonhole. Okay, and there it is, we have knit the buttonholes, so I hope you we're able to follow along with that, and I'm gonna show you a couple more times. This row was a, a little unique, or this buttonhole was, because we had this mock ribbing still happening over here. It's gonna look slightly different once we finish that. But um, yeah, so that is it. And then, so now we just wanna put our Russell Lovers back to two, so all needles will knit. And another thing we wanna do each buttonhole row is we wanna make sure our counter is correct, because it might have gotten set off when we were doing all the short rows, but ultimately we've only knit four rows in our pattern. So we started on row 24, so we wanna make sure that our counter is at 28. I see it's at 30, I think it got set off a couple times. So just ensure that before you move on. And then the next step is we are knitting to row 34, which is where we're going to join our mock ribbing. So I will catch up with you then. So now we are going to join our mock ribbing. So to do that, we just want to remove all of our weights and our cast on comb. And we are going to be hanging the first row of our knitting and before we continue on. So to do that, we're just going to be picking up this row right here. It's just the first row of our main yarn. And then just, you wanna make sure you get every stitch, otherwise stitches can drop because they will be live after we um, remove everything. So we're just gonna grab that first stitch here. And then this is a little different because the very first stitch we're gonna hang on the second needle, which is a needle that has a stitch on it. And then every other needle will be the empty needles in between, which is typical for mock ribbing. It's just slightly different since we added those to um, salvage stitches when we did our mock ribbing. So just wanna go ahead and hang this row. And then for that very last stitch as well, we're going to be hanging it on the needle next to the, the last empty one that we just hung. And that should be one R and we're just gonna hang that there, and that is all of our stitches. So we just wanna push them back, and then rehang our weights. And also, I forgot to point this out, <laughs> here's our button band here. As you can see, it looks nice, the buttons look good. Um, this is how it should look, so hopefully yours looks like that too. And then we're just gonna hang our weights, 
and then knit this row. And you just want to double check that all of your stitches are there. Sometimes they drop, so just want to ensure that that all looks good. And now we're ready to continue on. So from here on, we're just going to be knitting up to the next buttonhole row and then be creating more buttonholes. And I am, for this pattern, they're spaced 24 rows apart, which is a, you know approximately three inches. And so now we're going to be knitting to the next buttonhole row, which is row 48. So I will catch up with you there. So now we are doing a, another buttonhole. So to set up, it's going to be the same as last time. We are transferring the fifth stitch over to the right of it, and that's like six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, which is also five over to four. And then we're gonna take those empty needles out of work and knit one row. And then next we'll be putting, again, both of our Russell lovers onto one so that our stitches will be in hold. And then we're going to put all stitches to deposition except for these four. And then this time, as you see, we have more stitches over here because they're all in work now. We don't have mock ribbing anymore. And then, so we have this all set up and then we're gonna knit two rows. Then again, we're gonna put this guy into work and then these guys into work. I'm gonna knit one row. We're gonna take these five in D position, knit one row. And then we're gonna take these center guys. Oops, I messed up there. So I didn't mean to put those in D position. I meant to put them in working position. So working position as well as uh, that guy right there. That was the one that was out of work. And then we're gonna put these in working position, knit. And then we're gonna put, this is what we're supposed to do this row, <laughs> all of these guys in deposition position plus the eyelet, and then we're gonna knit two rows. And then since we started that button on 48, it should be at 52. I see I have an extra row there, so we're just gonna fix that. And we also wanna make sure we put our wrestle lovers back to two so all needles will knit. And then we're going to knit to our next buttonhole row, which is row 72. So now we're at row 72, which is our last buttonhole row. So again, I'm gonna transfer that fifth stitch over to the right. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, over to the right. And then if you're wondering why I took these stitches out of work, it's not totally necessary. Um, it doesn't create that much different of an eyelet. It makes it ever so slightly bigger, which is nice. But another reason that I did that is so it's easier for you to visually see where to do the short rows. Um, I found that that helped. So just in case you're wondering, but so we're starting again. So we're just going to knit this row. And then I promise I'll do it right this time. So there's absolutely no confusion. <laughs> we're gonna take all of these needles except for the first four in deposition. position. We're gonna change both of our lovers to one so that only working position needles will knit. And we're going to go two rows and then we're gonna move that guy back into work. And then visually you can see this is the next section to put into work. Knit one row and then put these first five, the first four plus the buttonhole in hold. And then we're gonna work one row. And then we're going to put the next out of work needle, the next buttonhole row in work, plus all of the stitches to the right of it. We're going to knit. And then we're going to put those next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. So it's seven center ones plus the eyelet in D position, and then work two rows. Okay, so that was our last buttonhole row. And now we're gonna put our Russell levers back to two so all needles will knit. And we're also going to adjust our row counter because it should be 76 and it's reading 77 because it's 72 plus four, so 76. And 
For this design, specifically the cropped version, we're only doing three buttonholes. If you're doing more, you would just continue on in the same manner. But because we're at our last buttonhole, our third one, um, at the end, we're only going to knit two more rows and then we're going to move on to our neckline decreases. So we're just going to knit one and two. And now we are ready to move on to the neckline. So to prepare for that, we are going to latch up our knit column, which defines our button band. And we're gonna use that for seaming later on. And it's easier, it's nice to do it now because it helps us see where the decreases are. So the stitch that we're going to latch up is um, 1L, it's this guy. And that is the same for all sizes. I have it so that all of the stitches are cast on over here per size. And then, and then our button band is always to the left of zero and everyone is going to have their knit column at one L. So we are going to just release that and drop it down. And then this is a bit of the <laughs> tricky part. You wanna drop it down to the E-wrap cast on row, and then you wanna pick it there, and so it doesn't go any further, and that's where you wanna latch up from. So, taking a closer look, I see my E-wrap cast on row is right here, so I'm just gonna stick my latch tool in to make sure that it doesn't drop. We're just gonna keep unwinding that, and there it is. So we got that last stitch there, and then from there, we are just going to latch up. This might be a little, <laughs> it's a little tricky trying to do it for the camera, but it was probably um, be a bit easier if you're not um, filming yourself. So <laughs> you can just <laughs> kind of take it down here and latch up. But yeah, so you just want to uh, take that all the way up and then put it back on the needle. All right, so we've just finished latching up. And now we are ready to start our neckline decreases. So the first thing we're going to do is change our counter back to zero and do our first decrease. So our decrease, every row is going to occur right next to the knit column. So basically we're going to be transferring this stitch over to this stitch oops, and then transferring the rest of these stitches over. So this is the 18th stitch from the left. So just to show you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That was the 18th. And then we transfer that over to the right. And now we wanna be transferring the rest of these stitches over. So we can just, if you have a multi-prong tool, you could use that. I'm just going to be using my three-prong one. So it's a lot of transfers, but hopefully uh, you get the hang of it and uh, it goes smoothly. Okay, so we've got all those. Just wanna make sure that's out of work because that's empty. We've got that. And then we are just going to hang our weights back on and then knit two rows. And then we are going to decrease again. And so one handy little trick that I found for doing these is since there are 18 stitches transferred total, I found it helpful to use my three prong tool and do six sets. And then so that way, if I, if I don't end with three at the end, then I know that I did something wrong. So um, it's just a good way to double check. And also when you're doing this, the knit column would be on the middle prong there. So this is the same thing we did before. It's just we're using our three prong for the entire thing. Last time I used my one prong just to demonstrate where the decrease was, but it's basically always gonna be in the same place, which is right next to that knit column. And it's important that it's right there because if by chance, it, you, you know, you placed it where the knit column was, later we're gonna latch up that knit column so it could cause some issues if there is um, some shaping happening where the knit column is supposed to be. Um, so just make sure that every row you're transferring 18 stitches over to ensure that the decrease is in the right spot. So again, we're just gonna knit those two rows 
And then you should be able to see where the decrease is, so I can kind of see it forming here, and you just want to make sure it's in the correct spot every row. So depending on your size is where these decreases will occur. Um, it's going to be a combination of every second row and every fourth row. Um, and then eventually we're going to hit our short row shoulder shaping we'll, where we'll be continuing the decreases and doing our short row shoulders at the same time. So I will be demonstrating that for you as well, but um, just make sure to reference the pattern for exactly what your numbers are and when that starts, but it's mostly similar, so I will be demonstrating that. And then, yeah, just to show you too, like what this looks like on the other side. I've already knit my left side. Uh, we're knitting the right side now. And then, so now you can see what those decreases look like. They create this really nice line. And as you can see, we're gonna latch up that column and, and they're just occurring like right next to that column. And so that is ultimately what it should look like once we're complete and then we're going to also be creating this angled shoulder here. And so I will catch up with you there at row 49 for the size three or whichever row in the pattern it tells you to knit to to start the short rows for your size. All right, so now we're at row 49 and we're going to be starting our short rows. So in order to do that, we want to put both of our Russell lovers on one so that needles that are in deep position will be in hold. And then for all sizes, we're going to take the far right three needles and put those in D position. And then we are going to knit one row. And for this next row, this is our wrapping row, we're just going to be pulling out one needle on the right side to wrap it to prevent holes, and then we'll be knitting a row. And just be mindful, um, on even rows, some people will still have decreases, so if you're going to do your decreases, make sure to do those at the same time. My next one is on row 52, so I'll show you how to do that there. But here I'm just going to knit this wrapping row. And then again, we're just going to be repeating this, and depending on your size, you will be um, doing putting either three or two needles into um, D position for the short rows. So for the size three, we're just going to pull three again. And then I'm going to do the one wrapping stitch. And this is a decrease row as well. So again, I'm going to be transferring 18 stitches over. I can see my decrease right there. So I'm just gonna transfer those guys over. And just something to be mindful when you're doing decreases at the same time as short rows, you wanna make sure these needles are in working position. Um, a lot of times I pull them out to D position just because it's easier and um, you know it helps the needles knit easier. But um, in this case, if they're in D position, they won't knit, which will cause some problems. So just wanna make sure after you do the transfer, you push them back to working position, which is um, uh, C in this case, since they were in D. Okay, so we're gonna take that out, make sure those are in working position, and then we're going to work that row. Then again, we're just gonna continue pulling three out. And then one. And then three. And then one again, and this is my last decrease row. This is row 56 for this size three. So we're just gonna do one more of those. We're almost done with our short rows, almost at the top. Okay, so we pulled out that one there. And then we're going to pull out three. And then one. And then three. And our last row is going to be row 60, which I've just reached. So we're gonna pull out one more. And then we're going to work this last row. And then we're going to put our wrestle levers back to two so that all needles will knit because we're done with our short row section. And then we are just going to knit two more rows. All right, 
so now we're basically done with our front right. Um, we can remove our ravel cord and take off this waste yarn, which um, I'm actually going to, <laughs> to use again because we're going to be scrapping off our shoulder stitches soon. So I can use that for that. And then we're also going to, before we move on, we're going to be reforming that knit column that we started. So we're just going to, you should be able to visually see, it's the one directly left of the decrease column, um, or you can count, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 stitches over. And then we're just gonna drop that. Hopefully you uh, put it in the right place, <laughs> or your decrease is in the right place and it will all work out. So we're just gonna drop that down to where we left off, right there. And again, we're just going to latch it up and hang it on the needle. All right, so we're just gonna hang that there. And then the next thing we are going to do is scrap off our shoulder stitches to prepare for knitting our collar. So to scrap off the shoulder stitches, and those are basically the stitches that are to the right of the knit column. For the size three, it should be 28, but just make sure to double check for your size. We are going to take the main yarn out of our carriage and just put it on hold so we can just place it in the back of the machine. And then we're just gonna take the carriage off. You can just take it off with that button and then put it over on our right side and then we're going to get ready to knit with waist yarn. And so also what we wanna do is we wanna put our carriage setting rustle levers to one so that needles will be in hold. And then we're going to take our um, band stitches, which is every stitch up to the knit column, which is easy to see, but it should be 17. And then we are going to put our waist yarn in the carriage. Again, just make sure that it's set so it only knits the needles that are in working position, not the ones that are in deep position. And then we're just gonna take our waist yarn and scrap off those stitches. So to scrap off, we're just using our waist yarn. Just gonna make sure that it's all set there. Just for about an inch or so. And then once it's good, we can just run the carriage across the needle and then they'll all be removed and they're safe because they're on the waist yarn. So now we have our carriage back at the left. We want the stitches to knit again. So we're gonna put our rustle levers back at two and then we're gonna grab our yarn that was on hold and put it back in the carriage so we can continue knitting where we left off. Okay, so before we knit this section, we're just going to add a stitch and this is going to be a stitch that we're going to, like a salvage stitch that we'll use to um, pick up when we're knitting our front to our back along the collar. So we're just gonna grab this little pearl ridge here. That's the stitch column directly next to the knit column. Just from that last row, we'll grab that pearl ridge and we're just gonna hang it on that needle. So now that there's 18 stitches in work and also make sure to take those shoulder stitches out of work so those won't get knitted. And then you should have 18 for the collar. And now we're gonna reset our counter to zero again. And depending on which size you're making is how many rows you wanna knit. For the size three, I am knitting 64 rows. So I'm just going to knit to 64. All right, so I've just reached row 64 and I've gone ahead and again reformed this um, column to a knit column that, that continued all the way up. And this one isn't the, the totally necessary, but it, it does really make it easier when you're seaming your band to have that as a guide all the way through. So I like having it there, but um, you could just eyeball it too if you didn't want to do another latched up knit column. This one isn't as important as the other ones because you won't really see it since it's at the back of your neck. But um, so the next step is we are going to graft this with the, um, the left side of our uh, cardigan. Now normally in the pattern I have you knit this first and then the left side, but for the purposes of the tutorial, I have this ready so we can move on. So I am going to transfer these stitches to a knitting needle because we are going to 
be um, seaming them together and uh, ultimately you want them in on, on a knitting needle. If you're not ready for that yet, you could scrap them off or you could put them on a holder, but ultimately you're going to want to prepare them for um, crafting them, which I will show you in a second. All right, so we don't need to leave a special tail. I have you leave a tail for the grafting on the left side, which is about four times the width of your knitting. And then how you wanna set it up is you want to have the side that has the long tail for seaming, which is the front left side. You wanna have that at the back and you want the wrong sides facing. So basically it's like you want the right sides facing out, wrong sides facing. Okay, and there should be 18 stitches on each front and back. And again, we're going to take, have the front left at the back, front right at the front, and we're going to thread the long tail that we have with a tapestry needle. I read, read recently, we're not supposed to call it Gitchener stitch anymore, so if you are familiar with that, that is what we are doing here, but I've, I've been told that we, or what I've seen on the internet, is that we should call it grafting, so that is what I'm going to call it. So you can look it up if you're interested to learn why. But um, to prepare our stitches for this, we are going to take our thread, and we are going to set it up for the very first two stitches by going as if to purl, which is through the top of the stitch, with our tapestry needle, pulling the yarn through. Oops, make sure there's no extra loops added. And then as if to knit, leaving that uh, stitch on the needle, pulling the yarn through, and now we are set up to start. And then these next four steps are the main steps that you're going to do um, through the rest of the stitches. So we're going to do as if to knit and pull that stitch off. And again, if you're not familiar with knitting, knitting is going through the bottom of the stitch, taking it off the needle, and then as if to purl through the top, pulling the yarn through, and then as if to purl on the back needle, as if to knit, leaving it on. And then we're just gonna repeat those four steps. As if to knit, take it off, as if to purl, keep it on, as if to purl, take it off, as if to knit, um, keep it on. And then we're just going to continue doing that um, to the very end. And as you may remember, there is the, that knit column there. Um, I think there's a way to graft knitting and purling. I tried doing ribbing once and it just did not turn out. So I am convinced that it doesn't really work. So I'm just not even going to try. But if you know a fancy way to make it look um, perfectly seamless, awesome, do that. I just, uh, I'm just making it like a knit um, graft, which you will see. So. I think I can show you my progress now so you can see what it looks like. Sometimes you have to tidy up the stitches a little bit to make sure the tension's right, but basically you can see here that it is creating this seamless join here so it looks like knitting and um, you can't even tell there's a seam there. And again, of course, you know, if you wanted to do a seam, you could do that. It's not that noticeable. It's just going to be at the side of the collar, but if you want this really beautiful seamless join, then I would recommend doing this and your sweater will look really nice. All right, and then at these last two stitches here, we're just going to do as if to knit and as if to purl, removing those stitches from the needle. And you most likely will need to adjust the tension of your row a little bit, but I've already done that. And as you can see, it looks really nice and um, seamless. So now we can set that aside and move on to the back and um, through the magic of video, I already have set up here. So the back is pretty straightforward. You're just going to be doing mock ribbing for the bottom and then knitting up to the row where you start the short rows. And for the size three, which I'm demonstrating, I am knitting up to row 48, but that's going to be different depending on your size. But when you're ready, you just want to put your carriage settings. Um, so your wrestle levers are on one to have needles and hold. And similar to what we were doing before, we're do shaping the shoulders, but now we're going to be doing both of them at the same time. So to get started, we are going to first um, put the left, far left three stitches in hold. So we're gonna move those to D position, and then we are going to knit. And then for the second row, we're going to put one 
needle in D position, and that is our needle every row just to prevent holes. And then we're going to put three needles on the right in D position and knit a row. And then again, we're going to put one in D position to prevent holes, three on the left, and then knit. And then one and three. So you can kind of get in the rhythm of it. We're basically mirroring each side. Basically, if you're going, if you're knitting this way, there's gonna be more needles in hold. And if your carriage is next to these needles, this is going to be one where you pull out one. So one and three. And then as with everything, it's going to depend on which size you're making. You may be adjusting the stitches that you put in hold each row. Some of you will be changing this to two needles at some point, but for the size three and some of the sizes, you're just doing three and one all the way until you reach the row stated in the pattern. So for the size three, we're going to be doing this to row 60. So I'm just doing row 59, I'm almost at row 60. And here I am. So for row 60, we're basically done with our short row shoulders and we're ready to work all of the stitches again. So to prepare for that, we're just going to again, put one more needle on hold to prevent um, holes. And then we're going to put the left shoulder stitches in working position so those will knit. And then we're going to work that row. And then now we are totally done. So we're going to put our Russell levers back to two. So all needles will knit. This is row 61, at least for this size three, but the last two rows for all sizes are going to be look similar to this. And then we're gonna knit our last row where all of our stitches will knit. So now we have finished the back, which is awesome and what we are going to do is first we're gonna cut our yarn. We're gonna get ready to scrap off. But when we break our yarn, we wanna leave a tail that is five times the width of the knitting because we're going to use that when we bind off, when we join our front and our back, which we're going to do next. So I'm just going to leave one, two, three, four, five times the width, seems to work. And I, I like doing anything I can to <laughs> make these knits as seamless as possible. It's hard with machine knitting, but anything I can do to eliminate adding extra yarn and extra ends, I, um, I try to do in my pattern. So we have that set up and now we just need some waste yarn. And then we'll thread that through. And now we're just going to scrap off all of the back stitches. however much you're comfortable with. This isn't very many, but we're gonna be rehanging it right away. So, okay, so that is our back. And now we are ready to join the front and back, which is very exciting. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to start with our front with the right side facing. So this is why we have this joined already so that it is ready to hang. For the size three, I know that there are 99 stitches, and so I'm gonna start at 50 and know that I'm going to end at 49, which is similar to how the back was. And so I am just going to hang the shoulder from the waist yarn, um, starting at 50, ensuring there's 28 stitches because that's how many we had for our shoulder. And again, that's gonna depend on your size and then we are going to hang the collar, which I will show you next. So I've just hung my shoulder stitches here and removed the waist yarn, and now I'm ready to hang the collar. So for the collar, we're going to be picking up both sides of the V of the selvage stitch there, and we're going to be starting directly above 
the row that we joined. So using our two prong tool, we're just going to be grabbing both sides of the V directly above that joining row, and then we're going to be hanging them. And you might just wanna mark where you started hanging because we wanna make sure that this is the correct number because this will matter when we're joining our front and back that we have <laughs> the exact same amount of stitches so that everything adds up. And so for the size three specifically, we're going to be picking up 43 total, um, which works out with the amount of rows that we knitted. So that should be good. So yeah, just continue on picking up two stitches for every three rows and hanging them on the machine. So now I'm just picking up my last stitch here so I can count, I have 42. And then three will be one more, which works out, and the stitch is right next to where I am hanging my shoulder stitches, so that is all good. So then to hang the shoulder stitches, you just want to, you can use your three-prong tool for this, and then just go directly through those Vs and hang all of these stitches, and then remove the waist yarn. Now we have our front hung with the right side facing and I've just double checked that um, I have the right amount of stitches, 99 for my size, but you just wanna make sure that that's correct because we will be hanging the back, which also has 99 stitches and we want those to line up. So to hang the back, we're going to have the wrong side facing. So basically the right sides of the cardigan are facing each other. And then we want to hang the last row that we had and we're just going to hang it, but we just wanna make sure that we are hanging it in the latches. And while the front, we push those stitches back, we're gonna keep these in the latches so that we can pull them through to join. Now we have the back hung and I just added um, some weights here, it is kind of a funny shape because it's kind of, um, what would you call that, like a curve, so sometimes it like rides up a little bit so that can help. So now that all those stitches are in the latches, we're just going to pull them back to join. You just want to kind of do that slowly to make sure they're all in there. And then once you get closer to the edge, you can pull them through. And then you just want to double check that they all came through and there's only one stitch on each needle. Okay, and then now that that looks good, we're ready to do our bind off row. So to do that, we, we are going to do a loop bind off, which is a bind off that I really like and works for a lot of things. We just wanna make sure that it's loose enough. So in order to do that, we're going to change our tension to four dials above our main tension. So since mine was four, I'm gonna change it to eight. And then I'm going to place that tail that we had left in my carriage and just put that in there, and then we're just going to knit one row. As you'll see, those stitches are pretty loose, and that will be a nice tension for this. And then now we can bind all those stitches off by grabbing our latch tool. We're just going to grab that first stitch, take it off the needle, Grab the second stitch, pull it through, and then we're just going to repeat that all the way down to the end. All right, so we're almost at the end here, just a few stitches left. And then once we go through that very last one, we can just pull our tail through. And then we can just move all these needles out of work. And now we can see our work. So first we'll just remove the waist yarn that we had. And now you can see how this looks. So this creates this really nice join. And as you can see, there's no holes here. There's no need to do anything extra to fix that. It just creates this really beautiful seamless join. And so now we have our front and back. So the only last steps we have left are, one is to add sleeves. And what I love about a drop shoulder design is there's, it's so easy to add sleeves. All you have to do 
is turn your work to the wrong side. And just like we were hanging the collar, you just wanna hang stitches for the sleeve. Um, pick, I picked up two for every three rows, again, hanging both sides of the V. And I find it easy to start at zero and hang stitches this way, hang stitches this way. Depending on how many you need to pick up, the pattern will tell you. And then you just knit with a series of decreases and then finish with a latched up rib, which I think looks really nice. Another option is you could work them from the bottom up and you could do mock ribbing and then knit them and then you would have to seam them on. I just find it easier to knit them directly on. It's kind of one of the, the advantages of a drop sleeve, so I'd prefer to do it that way. And then the other last thing that you need to do is just seam the button band. And I just wanted to show you that real quick to show you um, how to do that to make a really nice finish. Okay, so we're gonna seam the button band side and we want to grab a piece of yarn that is going to be the length of the button band. So you can just kind of guide that along. And then for this side, we're going to be seaming it all the way to the place where we have the join. And then we wanna take that length and then we wanna do an additional 25 inches. Okay, so we're gonna get that ready and then thread it up. And then we are going to start at the bottom of the button band and we are going to fold it and create a seamless join. And this is how you can make a seamless join when you have two separate pieces of knitting that have like a bind off or a cast on seam. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start at the top and we're going to count eight stitches over. So here is our Pearl Ridge column and then we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on that eighth one over, on that bottom row, we're going to go through both sides of the V of that stitch, and then thread our yarn through, just leaving a few inches at the end. And then we're going to go to the bottom, and then the stitch directly next to it, um, the V is going to be upside down when we see it, but we're going to go through that upside down V, both legs of the V, and pull that through. And then we're just going to continue in that manner. So we're going to go through both sides of the right side up V. And then both sides of the wrong side up V. And then we're just gonna continue until there is one stitch left on the bottom. All right, so we're almost at the end here. We're just going through this last V at the top, and then there should be one left at the bottom after you go through this last one. And then as you can see, that just creates another seamless join, which looks really nice. So when we get here, we just wanna to remember to um, bring our tail in. It'll just make it easier because it's a little more challenging to do later. And then this way we can also secure it, which we wouldn't be able to do later. But I mean, it's not, it's not like a high pressure area or anything, so it's, um, it's fine. But I would just uh, pull that through and secure it there. All right, now back to seaming our band. So now we're going to be seaming our band along our knit column, and this is where this comes in handy. So again, we just wanna thread up our yarn and we're basically going to be doing mattress stitch. Um, the only little thing to keep in mind is you want to also catch the mock ribbing along the way so that it looks nice and tidy. So we're just gonna start our mattress stitch by going through the first two bars between the Vs there. And then we're going to catch our selvage stitch on this side so there should be that knit column there. So we're just going through the two bars between these two knit columns here. Just gonna pull that through. And then each row, yeah, we just wanna catch this knit column so that it looks nice. And there should be like a looser side. It's just like that very um, last row of little ridges. It's not like a big deal. We're not formally having it part of the seam. We're just catching it as we go and then you'll see that that will look nice. So again, we're going through those, the bars of the two Vs of the knit column. We're grabbing a selvage stitch here by going to the, through the two bars next to that V column. And then every time we're just gonna catch every other loop on the edge here.
All right, and then we just have our last column there, and then again, going through those. These guys, and then from here on, it's pretty simple. It was just trying to make that look nice, as you can see, um, that will look good. And then for the rest of the band, we're just going to continue doing mattress stitch along here, and it'll give it a really nice finish. And hopefully your buttonholes line up <laughs> and those look good. And um, yeah, the other one, only other thing you'll have to do is the other side, it's slightly opposite. You're gonna start on the bottom instead of the top so that you're left with a selvage stitch to seam to the inside. The pattern will have photos and all that info too. But um, that is that. And so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know. Leave me a comment below. And if you make the cardigan, oh my gosh, please share photos. I would love if you shared them on Ravelry or if you shared them in a Facebook group. I do have my own knitting machine Facebook group, by the way. I will link that below if you'd like to join. I would love to have you and see what you're making. And otherwise, you can find me on Instagram as Girly Knits and everywhere else, Ravelry, Etsy as Girly Knits and at girlynets.com and I will see you next time. Bye!